A warm welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button. We have a massive detailing challenge on our hands. One of the toughest details I think we're ever gonna go through. We have an iconic Toyota Supra Mark IV with the legendary 2JZ engine twin turbo. The car's been sat on a driveway for a long time, so the first thing to do is take a look at the condition of it. So as you can see, nature and the environment are formidable foes and the main enemy in keeping a clean, detailed car. entire ecosystem of moss, mould, algae, lichen has got hold of this vehicle and it's going to be tough to let go. Now, before we start cleaning this car, it's really important to do a pre-inspection to identify any existing damage that we can't rectify. So we have a broken number plate and a deep gouge on the front bumper that we're gonna try and touch up. Your general scratches and swirls that you tend to see on old cars. Perished and rotten wiper blades some surface corrosion around the rear glass seal, some poor paintwork blending where the, we think the sides of the car have been repainted and blended to the roof at the top of each pillar, poor paintwork on the alloy wheels, and where these wing mirror covers have been on for so long they've actually dried out, perished down and damaged and imprinted themselves on the clear coat. We'll try and fix that later on. And generally we also have a lot of kind of etching and clear coat failure on the horizontal sections like the tailgate, the roof and the bonnet of this car where things like bird poo has sat there for years and eaten through the clear coat. And now finally marks the turning of the tide in the battle to save this car. It's time to go to war against the dirt. Okay guys, so we're starting with our pre-wash. All our pre-wash chemicals are going on dry and this will allow the pure chemical to soak and get absorbed into the dry dirt film. If we rinse down with water first, then that dirt film gets saturated with water and then it isn't able to draw in the chemical after that. So this method should get us the deepest clean.
Okay guys, next bit. We're gonna clay bar every painted surface, the glass, the headlights, everything really that we're gonna be polishing. If we don't do that, we try and polish, our pads are gonna get filthy, they're gonna break off all this contamination, dry dirt that's on here, and rub it into the paint, and we don't have a lot of clear coat to play with, or we don't know what we've got to play with. So we want to try and minimise the amount of contamination that's on there when we go and polish. So, let's get started. I'll split this wing up into two. Should put that on mist. Loads of clay loops so the clay doesn't stick. Nice good chunk of clay bar. And away we go. I can feel, I can feel ready. Just with a couple of passes, the amount of dirt that's pulling off. There is loads. I've got to go right the way up to the edge. And this is going to take a little bit of time and it's going to be quite tiring. But <laughs> that's all the fun. Next up, we had a chat with Max from Auto Valet Supplies about the best way to proceed with polishing this car. Maximus. Hey, bud, you're right. I'm all good. Here we go again. Another Next. challenge. Oh, here, yeah. What have you got in today? So we've got the Toyota Supra in that's been sat for a long time. Right. Um, we've done a paint depth gauge and the paint is ropey. Right, um, okay. no, no real lacquer on the bonnet and some of the top edges of the roof and tailgate. Sort of circumstances you're working with, I think you don't want to go too aggressive Definitely unnecessarily. Not, so S20 black, which is the one step yep. compound, oh, the medium compound, one, yep. which you use one of all the time. favourite little products. Um, and I really recommend with. the purple pad. Yeah, works well with that, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you feel that, it's good. got enough. Yeah, yeah, we use this all the time, they're great. To it. They work perfectly in harmony, don't they? And two? then I think you've already got the S40 from before. Yeah, we've got S40. So if yeah. you finish, finish down off with that, the S40 in the, uh, with the honey pad, yeah, they're brilliant, aren't they? You should get really, really good results yeah. without being over aggressive on it. Yeah, that's hot. That's cool. So we're at the halfway point of machine polishing, we've just taken the car out to eyeball it in normal life. It looks better outside actually than it does in the studio where you see absolutely every defect that we can't do anything with. The main thing we've got now is a nice gloss. We've taken away all that dirt and it's got us back to a nice shiny finish on one side of the car. So we know we just got crack on in the afternoon. Do the same process again to the other side. Get that as best we can and then dress up all the trims, the tyres, and then tomorrow we'll go on and sort out the interior. Okay guys, so it's day three. We've got to get the car finished today. This morning I'm working on the interior. All I've got to do is go through and do all the dust extraction, vacuuming, get all of the loose dust and debris out of the car first. After that, we're gonna be using interior disinfectant cleaner. We're gonna be using a citrus at a very low concentration. 
Things that are gonna help kill off the small amount of mold that's in that car. We're also gonna dress up all of the interior surfaces. We're gonna wet vac and extract the um, Supra floor mats and the fabric seats on the car, which are in good condition, but just need that extraction. We're gonna do it all in situ, actually. I'm gonna leave the seats in the car. Um, I can get at most of the stuff. And basically, I've just gotta crack on. <laughs> People often say to me in the comments, why bother doing all this work cleaning and detailing out a car? It's just going to get dirty again. The simple answer is, if you love doing something, it's not work. As soon as we discovered this car sitting on a driveway, we all knew this detail had to happen. All of the work done in this video was done for free but we had a hell of a lot of fun and loved every moment of the process. The only stone left uncovered was to return the car back to its owner, Nigel, and his daughter, Emma, and we were really nervous to see their reaction, and we really hoped they liked what we've done. Wow. <laughs> wow, shiny. Car. It's, when, it's just over 24 years ago and I don't even think it was as shiny when I bought it back then, quite frankly. And I had a vision in my mind of what you guys can achieve and I'll tell you what, this is astonishing.
Okay guys, this video is complete, this detail is complete. We've had a ton of fun. It's been a privilege to work on this. It's always fun detailing a kind of rare, iconic car like this. It was a real challenge. The biggest challenge was the amount of dirt and the condition of the car and the limitations of what we could achieve within the time frame. So again, we haven't perfected a car. We've made it a lot better and given the owner a good platform for which to go on and enjoy the car and kind of recommission it and then really take it for a good burn. If you're new to detailing, you want to learn about all the processes and products that we follow in, in this particular video, then check out my detailing fundamentals course in the description. Other than that, take care. Over and out. Where was I when